What's up, everybody? Tim Anderson here, a.k.a. Renfail, and we are back with the next episode of Mondays in Middle Earth. And today we are reading Chapter 7 of Return of the King, Book 6 of Chapter 7, Return of the King, which is the second part, um, Homeward Bound. So we finished the Many Partings chapter last week, and today it's all about actually getting back to the Shire. Now, one of the most interesting parts of The Lord of the Rings for me, um, and it's a part that I know a lot of people wished could have been included in the films. I understand why they didn't include it in the films, but it's the scouring of the Shire, and that's what we're coming into right now. So even though kind of, you know, the 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 big baddie is gone, we've gotten rid of the ring and everything else, we still have the repercussions of all of those things. And remember, we met Saruman on the road in the last chapter, and he had some some um, some things to say that kind of are foreshadowing what the hobbits are going to come home to um, in these upcoming chapters. So without further ado, we're going to get into chapter 7 today. If you haven't already done so, this is the part of the video where I say, hey, welcome. Welcome to the channel. Like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. I need to fix the lighting with my green screen. We're too far into it to do it today. Um, if you haven't ever watched one of these videos before, I've been doing this for a year now. We started with The Hobbit. We worked our way through The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers. We are coming to the end of The Return of the King. We will be doing the appendices, and then we'll be getting into The Silmarillion, which I have not read since I was you know, a teenager, late teens, you know, 25 years ago or so. Um, and beyond that, we might get into other stuff like the history of Middle Earth. I don't know. It depends on how this show continues to grow. So if you want me to continue to doing this, you need to do a few things. First and foremost, the like, subscribe, hit the bell icon is a good start. But also, join as a member of the channel. Support with a super thanks on the uploads. Also, a super chat on the premieres. And don't forget, we also have a Patreon page if you want to get into the fantasy book series and the tabletop game and point-and-click adventure game that I have with my wife and my brother. All of those ways pay the bills. Keeps me on the air because the advertising doesn't pay squat, really. I mean, it pays a little bit, but really it's the support from you, the fans, that keeps me able to do this full time and not have to go out and get a real job. So please support. Without further ado, Homeward Bound. At last, the hobbits had their faces turned towards home. They were eager now to see the Shire again, but at first they rode only slowly, slowly for Frodo had been ill at ease. So there's this point here when it talks about how when they got to the Ford of Brynn and he had, he had stopped and seemed like he was a little hesitant to ride further. Um, and this is all kind of tying back to what had almost happened to him. I mean, he had almost become a wraith uh, when he got stabbed. I just realized I have like a speck of dirt on my forehead, which you now have gotten rid of. Um, they also note that it was the 6th of October and Gandalf asks him if he's in pain. And he says, yes, my shoulder aches. The memory of darkness is heavy on me. It was a year ago today, so it was one year ago to the day, and Gandalf says, you know, it's unfortunate some wounds will never fully heal, and Frodo responds with this um, comment about how there's no real going back for me. Even though we come home to the Shire, I'm never going to be the same again. I've been wounded. This is, this is important, the way he says this. He says, I am wounded with knife, sting, tooth, and a long burden. Where shall I find rest? And it says that Gandalf did not answer. He doesn't have an answer. But we already know that, that Frodo gets to go to the Grey Havens because um, Arwen told him at the end of the last chapter that you're going to take my place on the boat that goes across. So we already know that Frodo's going to have a happy ending at the end of all of this, even though he's feeling a little bit desperate right now. i got to let a cat out. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Cat dad stuff. So the next day comes, Frodo's back to normal. It was a one-day thing, the anniversary of getting stabbed by the Morgul Blade. He's feeling a lot better now, which is good for him. They're back at Weathertop again. And this is when Frodo's like, come on, guys, let's go. I don't want to, I don't actually want to spend any time in the shadow of this hill. Um, so said so they, they, um, as they rode through, he wouldn't look towards Weathertop. He kept his head down, cloak drawn close about him. Um, Wind came down, great curtain of rain veiling Bree Hill from their sight. And it says here that it was near the end of a wild and wet evening in the last days of October when the five travelers rode up the climbing road and came to the south gate of Bree. It was locked, and the rain blew in their faces. They had expected more of a welcome. Finally, after calling out for many times, the gatekeeper arrived, and he carried with him a great cudgel, which is not normal. Um... 
says he looked at them with great fear and suspicion, but once he saw Gandalf, he recognized Gandalf and realized that they're hobbits. He was like, oh, you guys are locals. I love when they come to Bill Fernie's house and it's all shuttered up and Pippin's like, do you think you killed him with the apple, Sam? <laughs> Pippin's like, I hope so, but I'd like to know what became of that poor pony. Good old, um, good old Bill the pony. Hey, Nob's here and he recognizes them. They've come back, Mr. Butterbur. No, have they? I'll learn them, came Butterbur's voice and he came out with a rush and had a club in his hand. So he thought it was somebody coming to attack the inn. Um... <laughs> He says, can't you give old friends their names? He gave me a scare like that. Oh, so they do notice that it says, in the light of two candles that he lit and carried with them, Butterbur's face looked rather wrinkled and careworn. Things were not what they had been, but they said nothing and waited for him to explain. And he tells them that he'd like to have some quiet by, quiet like by ourselves. He says, some quiet time to talk with them. And that's what Gandalf says. That's what we want as well. We're not tired. We've been taking things easy. We were cold, a little bit cold and hungry, but that you have cured. So let's have some pipe weed and sit down. And um, But he says, I've only got what we grow ourselves. None to be had from the Shire these days, but I do what I can. He brought them back enough to last for a day or two, a wad of uncut leaf from the Southland, he said. Not a match for the South Farthing, but it is what it is. No one comes nigh round Bree from the outside and the inside folks. They stay at home mostly and keep the doors barred. It's all about them newcomers and gangrels that began coming up from the Greenway last year. So this is one of the things. If you've never played Lord of the Rings Online, one of the things I love about that game is that all of this, even though the Scouring of the Shire takes place after, the precursors of this are happening. So you can go in the Bree lands and go down to the Greenway and there's bad guys down there and you could fight them and there's there's lots of this foreshadowing happening. Uh, by the way, if you've never played Lord of the Rings Online, um, I do play le regularly if you would like to hang out with me from time to time. To time. Uh, as of this recording, I'm playing on the Landroval server again with my Hunter, but we also have a presence on the Laurelin server, which is the old uh, roleplay server from the European side of things, but that's more if you play European. We haven't really played there in about a year, so right now I'm mostly just doing my Hunter over on the Lendrovel server. So if you if you play there and you want to come hang out with me, just feel free to holler. Um, I do lots of Lord of the Rings Online stuff there as well. Side note. Join our Discord if you want to come hang out with us in game. Oh, so this is where he tells them that there was some trouble in Bree, and we had a real set to. Some folk were killed. And Gandalf's like, really? How many? And he's like, three and two, says Butterbur, re uh, referring to big folk and the little. And he gives them some names. Says, Those bad folks have gone for robbers and live outside in the woods beyond Archit. So again, if you've played Lord of the Rings Online, when you start a hobbit or a human character, you start in the woods of Archit. And it's full of the bandits that they're talking about right here. It's full of the bandits. It's so cool how it all ties in together. So this is one of the um, brilliant parts that I love about this, because they're returning in Splendor compared to how they left. It says, The hobbits suddenly realized that people had looked at them with amazement, not out of surprise at their return, so much as in wonderment at their gear, because they're kitted out at this point. They had become so used to warfare and riding in well-arrayed companies that they had quite forgotten the bright mail peeping out from under their cloaks, the helms of Gondor and the mark, the fair devices on their shields. These things would seem outlandish in their own company, and Gandalf, of course, too, was now riding on a tall gray horse, clad in white, with a great mantle of blue and silver, and glamdering at his side. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. It's like, yeah, we left kind of, you know, in the scurry of darkness and Mr. Underhill and all that, and we're coming back as heroes, you know. Really cool stuff. I, I love the Scouring of the Shire. There's, oh, I love it. There's some really cool stuff that happens. But Gandalf tells Butterbur, cheer up, sir. You've been only on the edge of very great troubles, and I am glad to hear that you have not been deeper in. But better times are coming. Better than any you've remembered, because the rangers have returned. We came back with them. There's a king again. He's going to be turning his mind this way soon. The green will be opened again. His messages will come north. There will be comings and goings. Evil things will be driven out. The waste will become a wasteland no longer, and the people and fields where the once there was a wilderness will now become beyond. And, um, you know, Barlamin's kind of like, nah, maybe, uh, you know, you're, you're talking big talk. Um, but Gandalf's like, you're, you're, you're going to be fine. He's because he's like, I don't want a whole group of strangers camping here and settling and tearing up the wild country. And Barlamin and Gandalf's like, that's not going to happen. There's plenty of room between here and there for people who want to live in the in the wilds and everything else, but it will be, um, 
you know, more people all over. Okay. Anyway, Fornost, Norbury. The king will come there again one day, and then you'll have some fair folk riding through instead of the Dead Man's Dyke haunted lands that he thinks is up there. It's really cool stuff. And, and he's like, well, it's all good for business, no doubt, so long as he lets Bree alone. And Gandalf's like, he knows Bree, and he loves it. He's like, does he now? Butterbur says, looking puzzled. Don't know why he should, sitting up there in his big chair up in his big castle, full of golden cups and wine. What's the prancing pony to him, or mugs of beer? <laughs> Sam says, but he says your beer is always good. He says? Of course he does. He's Strider, the chief of the rangers. Haven't you got that into your head, what? Says it went in at last, and Butterbur's face was a study in wonder. <laughs> Strider? Him with a crown and all in a golden cup? Well, what are we coming to? Better times for Bree at any rate, says Gandalf. Oh, that's awesome. Oh! Bill did come back. I forgot about this. Uh, I said, uh, Bill came back, all shaggy's an old dog, lean as clothes rails, but alive, and Nob's been looking after him. And Sam's like, oh my god, where's he at? He said he would not go to bed until he had visited Bill in the stables. Oh, as they're going out, um, Frodo asks, you know, uh, thinks out loud, says, I wonder what old Barlin, Barlin was hunting at, and Sam says, I wonder if it has something to do with what I saw in the mirror with the trees cut down and all. Um, and Mary's like, there must be something wrong with the south farthing as well, because there's a general shortage of pipe weed. Pippin's like, Lotho's going to be at the bottom of this. You just wait. Gandalf says, deep, but not in the bottom. You have forgotten Saruman. He began to take an interest in the Shire before Mordor did. Oh, well, no problem, says Mary. You'll be with us to help it clear up. But Gandalf's like, um, no, actually, I won't be. Um, I'm not coming to the Shire. You're going to have to settle its affairs for yourselves because I've got other things to do. Says, you've grown up very high now. Among the great you are, and I have no fear for any of you anymore. I'm going to have a nice long talk with Bombadil, such as I have not had in all my time. He says he's a moss gatherer, and I've been a stone doomed to rolling. But my rolling days are ending, and now we've got a lot of things to say to each other. That's pretty awesome. Frodo, you know, mentions that he wouldn't mind seeing Bombadil again. I wonder how he's getting on. Gandalf's like, quite untroubled by things, I assure you. Um, he might be interested in the Ents, but uh, anyway. This is when... Uh, Gandalf tells him, you should probably press on for home or you're not going to come to the Brandywine before the gates are locked. And Mary's like, there's no gate. There's the Buckland Gate, but let me through that at any time. And Gandalf's like, there weren't any gates, you mean. I think you'll find them now. And you may have more trouble even at the Buckland Gate than you think. But you'll manage. So as he turned Shadowfax off the road, the great horse leaped the green dike. And a cry from Gandalf, he was gone, racing towards the Bower Downs. And Mary comments that, hey, it's just the four of us, just like we started off. Um, it almost seems like a dream that has slowly faded, but Frodo's like, I don't know. Feels like we're about to fall asleep again. And that's the end. And now we are on to chapter eight, which is the scouring of the Shire, which is where things get really fun. I love the scouring of the Shire episode. I haven't read these chapters in 20 years, but I do remember this and it's a lot of fun. So we're reading it for next week's episode. So like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Never forget. I do this every Monday. Episodes are usually up at 9 a.m. Central. Uh, support if you can. Memberships, there's three different tiers around the channel. We do private videos for members, also polls and other things. Um, you could do a super thanks, which is a one-off membership, excuse me, a one-off donation to the channel. Um, you could also do uh, super chats on live streams and premieres, so hopefully we'll see you there as well. Don't forget the Discord down below, and if you want to hang out on our Patreon page and get involved with what my wife and my brother and I are building with our fantasy world, check that stuff out. Until next time, everybody, stay safe, happy reading. <laughs>